Hi there again today. So I just did a Maker Faire yesterday of my cities of the imagination showing my 3Z universe and it came to my attention that a lot of people are really into make, wanting to make 3D prints and 3D graphics but they find some of the software quite overwhelming. So things like 3ds Max, Blender, Maya, a very overwhelming software with lots of information and I'm going to show you a way to make just make start making 3d graphics instantly if you're a beginner or you're a learner or if you want to sort of use a program that's a bit more simple um, okay so what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna use this as a kind of reference I'm not gonna make the whole lot I'm just gonna show you how you can make sort of blocky architectonic structures this photograph is from the Habitat 67 building in Montreal which was made for the Expo 67 World Expo which is one of the best World Expos ever and if you're in Montreal ever I'd recommend going to see the grounds because there's still quite a lot of the buildings left including this one and then also the Buckminster Fuller Biodome um, and people actually still live in here and the flats are very sought after and there's a big waiting list so if you're a sort of millionaire or multi-millionaire in Montreal you can live in one of these cool things. Anyway, so that's the sort of reference image. And the program we're going to use today is Tinkercad. So I'm going to make a very quick architectonic structure, sort of based on that kind of look, and then I'm going to point it out as well. So what you have to do is you, go, you have to go to Tinkercad. The address isn't here because I've cut it off, but it's www.tinkercad.com. Yeah. And Tinkercad are part of the Autodesk 3D software suite. And I always recommend using Tinkercad first when people to introduce people to 3D graphics because as I said, other programs like Blender, Maya, or Autocad's really big CAD program that they have now, um, Fusion 360, <coughs> can be overwhelming to most people when they start. So when you've got to your account here in Tinkercad, you create a new design. Just loads up. So here's a work here's the work plane. So the middle mouse drags it around, right mouse rotates it, and left mouse um, selects like that. And there are other control tools up here, like most in the format of other Autodesk programs such as 3ds Max and Fusion 360. But we don't need to worry too much about that. All we need to do is to make start making simple shapes. So we've got a box here, and if you click on the box, like so, one click, and then you don't even drag it, you just move it, and then you move it onto this work plane. Just remember right click is to rotate. And you make sure you select that box, and then you can start shifting it around so you can select the one of these vertices here the dot which is a vertice and immediately we've made it longer in other words like the one of these containment housing units okay um so there we go that's one cube so that's a bit boring isn't it and what we need to do is we can go up to this basic shape here which is um an invisible shape i'm not sure what they quite call it but I'm not one for huge technical terms. So we drag that shape there and we, because it's hollow, basically it's what we call in 3D a Boolean. So the Boolean will subtract um, the shape and sub subtract that shape from another shape. You'll see in a minute if you don't understand. And by dragging these vertices, like so, it's, it's not playing, is it? Dragging these vertices, like so. Let's drag that like that. And let's try and get drag this up. There you go. Um, so that's going to create a sort of, yeah. So that's going to create a little indentation in the same way as these boxes have. I think the indentation there is quite far in, but who cares? It's just a demo. Okay. so. And what I do is select this one, hold down shift, and then select that one. And then we go to group, and then immediately it does what I was talking about as a Boolean. Okay. Um, and let's just drag another box. To change the color, by the way, we can do that. Don't worry too much, because I'm going to print it out in a white material. 
Okay, so, and then you can start shifting things around like so. Just make little boxes come out and boxes go in and boxes go up and boxes go down. That's another one. Let's pull this up using that. Uh, oh yeah, and to pull up by the way is um, left click and then move it up in the up direction. So left click and it's not doing it. It's just a bit tricky actually. <laughs> um, there and then there we go pull up um, go there pull forward pull this way in here left click pull this way so I'm getting that kind of stacking effect from the original reference image and that's just overlapping with the bottom cube it looks quite nice but Sorry, it's not a cube, it's um, a cuboid thing. And we can pull that up if we find the right vertices, which, so there we go, as we pull that up. Sometimes you have to sort of rotate around so the, ver the correct vertices comes up. And there you go, I think that's starting to look quite nice. <coughs> and then we can get another of these void boxes, and then we can. make a similar shape in the same way as the bottom one but this time I'll make it small like that yep just have some variation on the, on the theme so then again hover over this red box and press shift and then hover over that one that invisible box and press shift and then we go to group and as if by magic it does what I say a boolean is what I term as a boolean, what's called a boolean. So we've got two different combinations. So in 3D graphics, you want to reuse elements to save time. So you don't need to make another one of these. It looks the same. So all you do is just press Control C and Control V, and then automatically it's produced, reproduced another one of those ones. Yeah. Okay. And the same way as this one. So we can go from Control C, Control V, and that's shifted that round that way. Um, and then we can move this around like that yeah okay and you can see this crosshair here you can start to rotate so you can offset offset the model like so to make it look quite cool like that <coughs> okay and because I've dragged it there the this is Booleaned it in this area, but don't worry too much about that. And then control select this one, left click, control C, control V, like so. And you just keep repeating the process again and again. Until you get something you want. Let's <clears throat> go to there lift this up a bit make it thinner move that up there so we're going to move the whole block upwards so it's again stacked on top of those blocks yep I'm just going to pause the video and I'm just going to make a pleasing shape so it'll take a bit it'll be a bit boring and then what I'm going to do is the same process of duplicating and then using this invisible box with the solid box and then shift selecting both then going to group um, the, and then again it'll boolean it so I'll just do this for about five minutes then I'll restart the video okay okay so here's a few more blocks and I've rotated it around to make it look fairly interesting and immediately you've got a sort of 3d building that you can print out and it could be you know part of an architectural project you might be doing at college or school or at work or it could be you know a building that you could use for a 
you know, a tabletop role playing wargaming Warhammer game or something like that, where you could make it as an ornament if you were trying to make the building look like a blocky building that's near you, or um, again, you could try and model Habitat 67 using the techniques, just using the techniques that I've been using here. Um, that would be very laborious to do the whole lot. So now all I do is I go to um, export. Oh, hang on. Firstly, I need to group all these objects to make sure that when I export, it exports all the objects and not just one single block. So I've grouped them by pressing shift and left click, holding that down and then selecting them all. And then I'm going to go there, group, and that's grouped it as one object. Simple. Then I go to export, everything in the design, that's right. Download as an STL or OBG, so let's do it as an STL. Okay, and then it's basically done that. Okay, so ingenious full feed key. Okay. And then I'm going to open up Cura. Okay, Cura. Um, and in my case, it's Wan Hao Cura because I'm using a Chinese duplicate uh, um, Prusa clone and it uses it's kind of a, like a hybrid software that they've made from the software Cura. Cura is a um, software that exists between the 3D graphics program and the printer so it's what we need to use to set up a 3D print. So here's the 3D print space. If you're using another printer you're going to have to look at um, choosing the printer and the option is using the normal Cura program. I would ignore these really. These these are to do with layer heights. 0.2 is quite low quality, but remember if you're making a block, then it's not gonna have that many details. So 0.2 can kind of get away with that. Organic shapes, it's not so good. Um, I'm just gonna go back and check what that's called. Ingenious flat full feed key. Okay, and it's an STL. So I'm gonna so what I do is you can't see that, but I press file. And I press load and let's go to download and we're looking for ingenious There's the model there. And at the moment it's 5 hours 55 minutes. It's quite big. It takes a long time. It's still fairly still doable. Let's have a look at the layers. Let's see if it's healthy looking. Okay, there's a lot of support layers going on here. The this blue stuff doesn't is the support layer. We can't print in thin air, so as the printer goes up, 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 up. It, it the supports work out where there's going to be overhang like C. So this blue bit here, so when it, the support gets to the top here, it's going to support the new print there that's going to overhang. Let's go to scale. So at the moment this, the height is 100, um, 10, 11 centimeters. So well, let's take it and make it miniature. And let's take it down to 5. Okay, that's five millimeters, so let's t take it to 50, which is a sensible height. And that's gonna take one hour, five minutes. So let's go try that, and all we do is we press save here, and it'll save it to toolpath. Because I don't have the SD card in here at the moment, it's not gonna save it, but I'm gonna put it, put it in after the recording. Um, so the next part, which is in this video, I'll show you the result of the 3D prints. And again, one needs to check if it looks all okay here. Everything's intact as I go up each layer. It's all red. The fill is um, 10. It's quite low, but that should be okay for just a rough print, like so. So next we'll see the 3D prints. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.
Okay then, so hello dudes and dudettes, back again. Um, and this is the resulting print of the architectonic structure that I made in Tinkercad. I'm going to take the autofocus off because it's rubbish, and I'm going to focus myself. Let's hold it close from above and turn it around. So here are the supports for those that you don't really do 3D printing. The 3D print, as mentioned, needs supports. So here, and it just easily comes off a bit like a model kit. I always like to think, um, just sort of scrunch it and scribble it. Not scribble it, scrunch it. Then that starts to come off like so. Just take a bit more some tweezers to get in the nooks and crannies but as you can see it's not a bad print when I auto focus it when I focus it without the autofocus just turn it round for you quickly um, you can even see the detail of the window so although it was a 0.2 high layer take the base off actually Although it was that quite a low resolution print, it's still as because it was blocks, then the low resolution didn't really affect the the look and feel of the object. And it was quite a good idea. Perhaps I'll make some sort of drawing from above and have these as wee little buildings doing stuff like that, you know, casting shadows. Quite a good idea. But anyway, so that's awesome. So you can easily make a 3D print, a simple building, or you can advance to more vehicles and stuff using Tinkercad, and it's a really good way to start learning to model your own stuff. So, if I don't know if you're like me, but I'm fed up personally in 2017 seeing um, Groot's, um, Iron Man masks, all that kind of stuff. People just downloading the files, and that's all they're doing, they're just printing it out. And often they're not printing out properly because they're not splitting the print out there. They don't even know how to split up the model. They just print out the whole thing, and then they complain when, you know, <laughs> 20 hours into the print, it fails, and they have to do it again. So, I really recommend you get modeling, even if you like to download and, you know, the latest Star Wars models you can get online and that sort of thing. The the good thing if you can do 3D modeling, you can mod them, so you can add new helmets, you can add new equipment, and that sort of thing. So. You, you I think if you've got a 3D printer, you really should, in my, in my opinion, perhaps you'll argue not that you you should learn 3D modeling. It is just like, just goes together like bread and butter. Yeah. Okay, so thanks very much. Um, I'll be doing some more stuff in the coming weeks on 3D printing. And if you liked my, this, this, um, what, what is it? <laughs> this YouTube cast, then please share it and comments and questions are great. And if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my newsletter, and you can check out my 3Z universe at jamesabelart.com forward slash blog. And you can also go to an online shop link there and you can buy my 3D prints and artwork from that as well. So thanks very much and speak soon wherever you are in the world. Bye bye. <laughs>